Welcome to my presentation with Ecamm about what to do with your content once it goes live. That's why I call this one, So You Went Live. Now what? A little bit about me. These are some of my credentials that I have that makes me worthy of talking to you guys today. But the story that matters the most to me is this one. This is my super weird family. We are super nerdy. We are super playful. We are super loud and incredibly outgoing. And they're really the reason that I make all of the things and do all of this stuff. But our origin stories is a little bit different than others. In 2013, in August specifically, I got married, got pregnant, and my husband got a call from the United States Air Force that they had a spot open to him. And this was a big deal for us because we were trying to figure out like, what were we going to do next in our life? And this was just the best option for us. And we are proud military children going back generations. And we still to this day support our military as much as we humanly possibly can. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about military life is that Military spouses kind of get a raw deal. In fact, 28% of us are unemployed and 38% are underemployed. That means a lot of us have degrees that are just collecting dust and we're not really able to do anything with them because we're always moving, we're always at the mercy of the military, and it's hard to find options. And I remember being a kid back in 1981, we got orders and stationed in Okinawa, Japan. And my mom actually had to fly back to the United States and stay with her parents in order to to get a job to supplement our family's income. And I was left with my dad and they were a whole world apart. So when we got stationed in the middle of nowhere in Texas, I was really sort of shocked and surprised that 25 years later, this was still an issue. The town that we lived in did not like hiring military spouses. And at this point, I had been a social media marketer for five years. And I was like, you know what? There has to be a way for me to use social media to help these military spouses. And that's when I started all-in-one social media, where we help put military spouses to work anywhere that they're stationed in the world as social media managers to help businesses grow with better content marketing with our do-it-for-you services. We offer monthly subscription plans and so much more. But most importantly, we're putting military spouses to work. We've been able to hire and train dozens of women who are able to take this job with them no matter what life throws at them. We have been through deployments. We have been through babies. We have been through almost the brink of war for some of us. And now we are all dealing with this pandemic. And no matter what happens, we have each other's back because we understand this life unlike any employer could. And that's how we take care of each other and we step in wherever things are needed. But then something happened. I was about to become one of those military spouses that was going to be shipped to the other side of the world. My husband came home and was like, hey, baby, we're going to South Korea. And I was like, okay. And I was trying to figure out what is it that I can do to continue to grow this business, to continue to put military spouses to work. If I am not able to network and connect with people on the same time zone, because most cases it was a 14 to 17 hour difference. That's when I found this really wonderful book by Amy Schmidt Tower Landino that is called Vlog Like a Boss. And it showed me how I can use YouTube to solve people's problems while also expressing it in my own quirky, weird way. And on in August of 2017, I launched my YouTube channel focused on helping businesses grow with better social media and content marketing. I have over 400 videos, solving problems, answering tutorials, giving theory, and lots of value and resources to people, very much like what you guys are doing with your live streams. So I want to preface this by saying if I can do this, I'm a military spouse, I'm a mom of two, I'm a wife, I'm a business owner. So if I can use this system to help grow my channel and my business, you can too. And I'm going to let the data give this argument for you. Now I had been preaching lots of different parts of this system I'm going to share with you, but I put it into place super hardcore for my business at the start of 2020. And so this is where I was at. Like I was maybe getting maybe like 900 views, um, you know, on my videos a month. It was not bad, but it wasn't like great. And the more and more that I was implementing the system that I'm sharing with you, the more my videos started being consumed and watched. And then ultimately found in search and and just kind of really took off as well as for my website. This is my website traffic. As you can see, at the start of the year, it was kind of uninspiring. But now based on this system, 
the Google analytic rhythm, um, the Google analytic gods have picked up my channel and been able to see, oh wow, these are all these really great things that she has going on. Let's keep her at the top of the rankings for what she's doing. And then of course, this is my email list. As you can see at the start of the year, it was uh, very uninspiring and very small. And as I started to grow and add it in, as you can see, probably around the end of January is when I finally had converted everybody over. I still was having a steady increase and a steady growth to my list. And then again, it shot up in the past couple of weeks. So if you're not sold on this yet, let me tell you what some of my clients are saying that are using this system, not only for, for their business, because that's working for my business. This is um, Crystal Hammond. She runs a pet sitting business in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And every time she goes live on her on her channel, she makes a sale in some way, shape or form. She's either booking new appointments for people to be doing visits with her when people were allowed to leave their houses. That was, if she's trying to sell a product or a service or stay in touch with people, she is making those sales. And she does that all through video and this distribution system. This is Brooks and he is a realtor in Southern Phoenix and he uses video to not only inform people and like be super quirky. In fact, he calls himself the prospector, um, but he uses video because it's so easy for him to create content with it. And all of the other stuff that comes from that video supports it so that he can get the results he's looking for. And this is Eric Mitchell. He has a live show that is focused on telling the story and helping people through media relations. And he uses video because again, it's so easy for him to create. And we were actually literally just talking today at the time that I recorded this about how recording is the easy parts, all the other stuff that makes it work. That's so important for longevity. So I know at this point you've got to be convinced. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. Okay, so before we leave this session, I want you to know where to put your content, how to get it out there, and some tools and tricks that I have to make this a little bit easier for you. So are we ready? Take a quick drink and we're going to dive into this and I hope you're ready to take some screen captures. Now, I wouldn't be a good marketer if I didn't do a little bit of self-promotion. This entire system is a lot of work and requires like... A, a really specific skill set, or rather more specifically, a really lots of time. So what I put together is my 30 day video content marketing challenge. And with this challenge, what we're going to do is work through one video and create all of the supporting content that goes with it over the course of 30 days. So that one video can be the pillar of all of your marketing for up to a month. You can do that. Now I do this for one of my videos every single week, but if you are limited on time, or you want to just kind of be focusing on specific lives and stuff, this system will walk you through all the tools and I'm going to hold your hand through it. So really consider checking that out. It's 30 DVCMC, which is 30 day video content marketing challenge at all one social media.com. Okay. So this is sort of our flow chart that we're going to be working through and creating all this content that supports it. So let's talk about what we need to create first. Again, everything that we're creating is going to be with purpose and our community involved in mind. But the biggest one is search. Now I know that you're going live and so it's a different sort of mentality, but it's just as important as anything else to make sure that you're creating content in live for the replay. So you want to make sure that whatever you're creating, people can find through search later. So we're going to create something once and then put it where all of your ideal customers want to consume it. I know that you love the live community. I love the engagement that happens and all of that. But you know what? There are some people that just can't get into that live life. Sometimes they're just too long. They want people to get to the point. Um, sometimes they don't have time to watch it. Or sometimes they just don't like watching videos. I can't tell you how many of my own friends and customers are like, Desiree, I don't watch your videos because I read faster than I watch your videos and that's just a waste of my time. So we're going to talk about different options for how you can take your content and make it digestible based on where people want to consume it. So here's what we need to make. First things first is we obviously need our original video. Now I'm going to talk a lot about how you need to put your original video up on YouTube, no matter what happens. A lot of people are going to be live streaming this to Facebook, but wherever you put this, the ultimate home for your live video needs to be on YouTube. Next, we're going to create a thumbnail. Now you should have already done this for your live stream, but if not, now's the time to do it because you're going to want to use this thumbnail for multiple promotional pieces. 
as well as creating a blog post. So you're going to need a blog for this. It's going to go with your video. Now I have a tool at the end of this presentation that's going to make this super duper easy for you. But if you're going to put all this time and effort into creating a video, you have to pair it with a blog so that you can increase your chances of getting ranked higher in Google search because any blog that has a video will always outperform it. And additionally, you wanna make sure that that video is a YouTube video, not a Facebook embed or a Vimeo or a Twitch stream. You wanna make sure that you are sharing a YouTube video because it's gonna help with your search rankings better. Secondly, or secondly, I think we're on the fourth. Fourth step is gonna be email marketing. Now, whether you're sending out an email before your live goes out or to encourage people to watch the replay, email is a very important part of the promotion of what you have going on for your content. Again, it's very important to be creating an email list um, ongoing no matter what you're doing. And there's a lot of different tactics and tricks for it. And I know that there are some great presentations in Ecamm to help you with that. So um, talk about more additional promotional images. Now I'm a huge, huge believer that you should be creating all of your promotional images in the restrictions or best performing chances of the platform. So as you can see, I have a square one that performs better on Instagram. I have this vertical one that performs better for our stories. And I have this horizontal one that I use for Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Additionally, you wanna do this with a quote image. Just write, quote yourself or quote your guest. These are going to be vital because it's going to be a different way to get people to engage with your content. It's gonna be thumb stopping content. You're like, oh, nope, I gotta pause my scroll and read what this is about. And then hopefully it'll convert that to that click to that watch. Next is going to be Pinterest images. It's very important to remember that your Pinterest images need to be completely different from your story images. Now, if you, as you can see, my story images are vertical. They're more, um, in, they're more for like Instagram and for stories and things like that. But these Pinterest pins are very beautifully designed. They have a specific look and feel. They have fancy fonts and they don't really match the branding that I have in a lot of my stuff because I'm trying to make something that is Pinterest worthy, sticking with the rules that go with the platform. Next, we're going to do a teaser video. Now, these teaser videos are great, especially if like you have a really well rehearsed introduction to your videos because it's important to make sure that what you're saying and what you're delivering is not only going to lay the foundation for the live stream, but also going to make people want to take action and watch more, which is what these teaser videos are going to allow for you to do. So if you can just sort of use that teaser, that little blurb that you have in the beginning, and then encourage people to go watch the rest in a specific place. So in the case of this video, I want them to go to my YouTube channel. And then I of course have that searchable title um, on the video so that it's more clickable. And then the next thing I want to encourage you to check out is a teaser video. Now I love teaser videos because they're just kind of a different quirky way to promote really anything with video. Video is so successful, but these small thumb stopping scroll, um, content pieces are very engaging and it makes you think, huh, is making text animation videos super easy? How do I do that? Oh, she's going to show me. Well, let me go watch this video to see how this works. You can apply this to your live streams as well. Again, the point of all of the stuff that we're making is so that we have a content library of things that we can continue to share as a part of our social media and distribution strategy. So here's a list of everything that you should be making to support your live stream, whether you're going live once a month or once a week, uh, whatever that is. This is all the stuff I encourage you to make to support it. Definitely screen capture this and we're going to move on to our next slide. So what I love about video marketing is that you can keep marketing it over and over again for new leads and that for those that missed it the first time. And with a live stream, you literally only have a chance to get them during that live stream. Sean Cannell is always talking about you want to create your live streams for the replay because so many you have so much more watch capability once it's already happened. And the point of live versus pre-recorded is the community that you get to build from it. But you should be creating that content in the beginning for search and then do the community part maybe near the end. That way you can, again, get more value from your videos that you're making so they can keep working for you. So let's talk about what the next seven days need to look like for when you go live and then all the things that you need to do with it. So the first things first is you got to do the live stream. Like you can't do anything 
unless there is a live stream, okay? And then I'm going to encourage you to get those closed captions for it. Now, depending on how long your live stream is, that can get a little pricey with the, if you're using a tool like Rev.com, which I talk about later in the presentation. But it's very important to make sure that you're getting those closed captions. Or if you're using Facebook, you can turn on the auto generate feature because any video that has closed captions will always perform better than one without because 84% of people are consuming social videos video without sound. So it's very important to have that once that once that video is live and you can get that replay going. Next, you're going to take that closed caption file that you have, and you're going to convert this into a blog post. Now you can, depending on again, the length of it, you might be able to just take the direct transcription and turn it into a blog, or you can make sure that you're including the finer points that you have in your live stream, or maybe you're documenting at the timestamp. So like at a minute 35, we're talking about this, and then at four minutes and 52 seconds, we're talking about this and that kind of stuff. So spend the time figuring out what to do with that blog, where it can act almost like show notes for your live stream. Next, you want to share that video. Now, whether you have multi multi stream to Facebook and YouTube, or you've gone live and you need to download it and put it in all the places, share that live stream. And then also make sure that you're promoting it with Twitter, with Instagram and with LinkedIn. I also want you guys to do some Instagram stories. These don't always have to be pre-created things. Uh, those are really great as well because it keeps it on brand. But if you just want to pull out your phone, have a little conversation about how the, what this live stream is going to solve for them, get them over. It's going to be a really great way to keep that story engagement alive. Update the link to your bio on Instagram. Of, create your Pinterest pin and pin the backlink of that Pinterest to the live stream. And this live stream should be to the one on YouTube, not to the one on Facebook or anywhere else. And then again, you want to make sure you're talking to your email list, whether it's about, sorry, this is gonna say before, about the live stream, before it happens, or with the replay. Okay, so day one is kind of your busiest day, but it's gonna pay off. So day two is definitely going into promo mode. So we want to make sure that we're tweeting out the YouTube video and the blog um, that we're talking about it in stories and then go back and engage all the content that happened from day one. I bet you your live is getting a lot of play on the replay. So you want to go make sure you're keeping up with the comments. Day three, again, tweet. In fact, we're just going to say this at this point. You're going to tweet every day the YouTube video and the blog. And you also want to share on day three that teaser video to get people to go watch the replay of your video in all the places. Day four, again, tweet Instagram story. Now it's time to bust out the quote images that you're going to do to promote the link to your YouTube. Or if you really want, you can promote your uh, Facebook link as well, whatever you're looking for, just get that quote image out there and share the desired link that you're wanting to do to promote that. And then again, on day four, we're going to use the Pinterest backlink to the blog. On day five, we're going to tweet again. We're going to do our promo images. Again, link to the YouTube channel or to the replay if that's what you're pushing. And then consider on day five also doing that text overlay video in addition to the promo images, but like spacing out the time. Because again, text overlay videos are a really great and fun way to create additional content for your system. On day six, on top of doing your Instagram stories and your tweets, now is the time to do that um, the text. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had the day five with the text overlay. That was a copy paste error. Day six is when we're going to do the text overlay video, not day five. I stand corrected. Uh, so day six, we're going to do the text overlay video to promote that video as well. And then on day seven, we're going to T is what's going to go live tomorrow. And we're also going to make sure we're going to create and schedule whatever materials that we can in advance. This might also be a step that you want to do um, on day one after the live stream happens. So this is what the seven day distribution system looks like. Um, again, it's about getting your content out there and continuing to reuse it and share it in ways people can miss it the first time or in ways that people want to consume it. Is that flow chart for y'all again? Okay, so next let's talk about my favorite tools and tricks that make the magic happen. So Relay That is my favorite when it comes to creating graphics because it's so easy. I was able to put all these graphics together super duper easy because they have these pre-existing sort of sizes and templates. So I can pick like one template and it'll also have versions for vertical and for square and stuff. So I can kind of just mildly adjust each one and I can create my content, uh, my social graphics in like five to ten minutes. 
Next is going to be Kapwing. Awesome to use. Fun to say. Kapwing allows you to take your video and when you're clipping it up into the different parts and you're going to be able to convert them into the appropriate sizes for the different social networks. So if you need an Instagram one, you need a story one, it's going to dissect it so it's formatted in the size of the platform. Uh, there's a lot of really great other tools that you can do within Kapwing. They have a closed captions generator if you're looking for that that's in beta test. You can edit your videos out, you can rotate, you can add text. It's a really great tool. Next, I want you guys to consider using Biteable for all of your text overlay needs. I recently did a summit of my own and I used Biteable to create the promo graphic video that I used for my targeted advertising. And I also used it for social sharing as well. I was able to not only upload my own photos, but use their existing stock library and their um, text animations and their text uh, font library all that stuff to make this come together. Additionally, they have a wonderful and vast template library for explainer videos and putting things together for more social sharing videos. It's a wonderful tool and you can test them out for free and get your first video done um, with allonsocialmedia.com forward slash biteable. I'll make sure y'all get those links. Next is TubeBuddy. Now, in order for your videos to have success, um, not only does the content have to be great, but they have to get found. And how they're gonna get found is with the right keywords and optimization. That's what I love about TubeBuddy is it's gonna be able to let me take the content I'm trying to say and get found for it and really funnel it down in a way it's gonna be the most successful for me. So as you can see through what talking here, I have getting served with social media. It's super vague, not gonna help me out. I'm trying to narrow it down. Maybe a social media starter kit would be good. It's like, eh, but you know what would be really helpful if I really niche in, I talked about exactly who I want to talk to. So getting started with social media for retail. This is a video that performs well for me. What I love is if you can see right here in the middle, it says above the little um, bar for red to green, it has weighted. It's giving me this score based on my channel, based on how YouTube is currently categorizing my channel with the content that I have there. So it allows me to stay on track so I, I am getting categorized appropriately. It is free to use. Um, you can go to tubebuddy.com forward slash Mrs. Desiree Rose to check that out for free. And then Sendable. Now here's the thing about all this content that we're making, all this stuff that we're doing. If you have a lot to do, it's really hard to organize all of it. And you're, it can be hard to manage the content, figure out how to schedule it and engage with it. You know, if you have a team of people that you need to work with, and it's just nice if everything is in one place versus trying to like be scattered and all over the place. And that is why I adore and love Sendable with all of my heart. I have been using Sendable almost as long as I have been a social media manager. I have tried all the tools. I have tried the Agora Pulses and the Sprout Socials and the Buffers and the tweet decks and the Hootsuites and all of that. And I always come back to Sendable because it's easy to use. They have a, a, a team that listens to the things that you want. They're constantly developing and making things better. And I just absolutely love this tool. So please go check it out, 30 day free trial. All right, and next is gonna be rev.com. Now I talked earlier about closed captions and taking the transcripts that you get from your closed captions and turning them into the base for your blog. What I love about it is you can just send them the link, they'll type up the closed captions because they're putting to, to work dis, uh, disabled individuals, stay at home moms, people that are just looking to supplement their income part time, and they're able to turn around your closed captions in less than 24 hours. You go through and proof them to make sure that they're all good, but then you can also download the TXT file and use that as the base for writing your blog. So when you're going through your content and you're trying to figure out what to do once you've gone live, you wanna plan out all the content that you have and start testing what is and isn't working. And then I would encourage you to check out the seven day, uh, use the seven day video distribution system while also not getting super frustrated. You can also sign up for the 30 day video content marketing challenge to really help you on the way to success with distributing your content and making sure your lives are impacting people and that you're not just stuck in this constant state of creating content. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk, to listen to me talk, and I wish you luck with all of your live streaming. And remember, you are impossibly amazing.